Here we go. Easiest coping with Corona video in the whole wide world. Look at that beautiful winter sky in Cape Town. It has been absolutely divine being able to get out and just enjoy a little bit of the city. And of course, we are on Chapman's Peak Drive, one of the world's most famous ocean drives. There's my little egg. And what she is going to do is she is going to look after the videoing as we drive home so we can give you a virtual tour. Okay, so, hello. Wunderbar. Wunderbar. So, I'll give you a virtual tour. The scenery is more important, darling. Okay. It's almost as lovely as me. Anyway, so. That mountain in front of us there, the tallest one, no darling, there to the left, that is Constantiaberg, and up there is Nurtug Peak, and no, Tulls more or less just keep the camera in front of us, like, Will you... okay. so that there's photographic evidence of me smashing the cyclists to the ground. There we go, those mountains back there, Constantiaberg and Nurtug Peak, but from this side, which is normally of course not what people see, across the bay, this is Chapman's Bay. You have Karbonkelberg, which means Karbunkel Mountain because of all those heads which kind of erupt from it. So, very beautiful mountain with not a very nice image attached to it. And the front of that mountain is the Sentinel, which you might see later. But anyway, this road was completed in 1919, I believe. So, think Treaty of Versailles type times. And when it was completed, I think it was from 1915 through 1919, I might be wrong about that, but anyway, around about that time, when it was completed, people actually said that it was not possible, and later you're going to see why they thought it was impossible. So far we've done the kind of more everyday part of the road, the Chufun, as the Afrikaans would say, part of the road, but we're going to see some interesting things before terribly long. Let me open the window so that tools can get that lovely perspective of the Sentinel. So it's a toll road and ordinarily you get the pass back there and over here is where they check the pass but there weren't people today when we drove from the other side so we're simply retracing our steps. It's not very expensive anyway, it's a couple of dollars, which, considering how amazing the road is, which you'll see soon, is, in my opinion, very little indeed. So, as we come around the corner, you're going to see this great arc of what is called Chapman's Bay. Those cliffs over there, most typified by the Sentinel, leading all the way through to Klein Leopold, that means Little Lion's Head. Because, of course, Cape Town has got a peak, famously known as Lion's Head, and that looks quite a lot like it, but it's smaller. Then you have Grootkop, which means Big Head, and then after that, Constantiaberg, etc., etc. But now, we begin the more interesting part of the drive, where it starts getting windy, windy, windy. You see, when this was built, people thought it was impossible because of the sheer scale and steepness of these cliffs. And these cliffs are not only very large, you know, at some points they're almost 600 meters or 2,000 feet tall, but they're geologically fascinating, and you're going to see why in a bit. If you look to the sides here, you see that there are bands of sedimentary rock, and some of them are brown, some are purple, and some are orange. The color also varies based on time of day, so especially in the afternoon it gets more a vivid orange, especially at sunset, of course. But if you look beneath these sedimentary bands, for instance, down there by the sea, you're going to see it a little bit better later, you're going to see some smooth granite. Now, those are two entirely different processes. The one is igneous, so in other words, it's caused by heat, whereas the sedimentary process has nothing to do with heat at all. And it's very unusual to have two very distinct geological processes meeting in one structure. Geologists call this an unconformity. An unconformity basically when two different geological processes meld to make one structure. And unconformity is when 
understandably quite rare and often even a small unconformity will be famous. In this case, however, it's not a 100-foot structure or something which is an unconformity. It is a 2,000-foot tall cliff structure and the bottom third or so is made up of that beautiful smooth granite whereas up, up, up and away, if you look up, you will see the sedimentary bands of rock that absolutely tower high into the sky. And here are the turbos and the orangeys of that much more in evidence. Now, as we go through that, this beautiful sunset zone that we carved out is the three turbos that are in the middle of the turbo pit which is on top of the canal. The boat is very far away while the boat is going to the top of the road. visiting Cape Town Centre itself. So I'm not going to continue this for terribly much longer but there is at least one other scenic view that I think that we need to take in on our virtual tour and that scenic view is a rather lovely beach stretching out in front of us now with the cold waters of the Atlantic lapping its white shores is a beach called Five Mile Beach. Now Five Mile Beach is actually only four and a half miles long so gosh how naughty of them to stretch that so much. But for context those lakes which have appeared on the beach, there are at least three of them at the moment, are each larger than Bondi Beach in Sydney. So for an urban beach to be of that scale I think people would agree is quite remarkable. And here's the most bizarre thing of all. It is, at best, the third longest of Cape Town's urban beaches. Clearly, we've got very much longer beaches elsewhere in the country, but for a city to have so many beaches of such extent, I think is quite remarkable. So, there we go. I hope our little virtual tour, which is now coming to an end, will help you all cope with Corona. <laughs> Thanks, man.